at 9 4. Thank you, Taylor. And could you do the roll call, please? Juliet Ballard. Juliet Ballard, Dexter, Michigan. Marta Larson. Participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Grass. President calling in from Milan, Michigan. Marty Reginald is excused. Absence today, Elizabeth Thompson. President calling in from Ypsilanti Township. Jennifer Green. Phyllis Herzig. Present calling in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Green. Calling in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Jennifer Heckendorn also has an excused absence. Brenda McKinney. Jasmine Cooper. Present, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Allison Foreman also has an excused absence and Annie Somerville. Present, currently in Pittsfield Township, Michigan. We have quorum. Wonderful. Uh, next up is public participation. Um, we have two members of the public in the um, room today. Feel free to raise your hand and if you would like to say anything during public participation. All right, seeing none, um, we can move on past the commission response to public participation to the approval of the minutes. Someone like to make a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of our last meeting. Or any discussion? I'm sorry, who supported? Marta Larson. Thank you. All right, no discussion. Taylor. All right. Julia Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. <clears throat> Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Bruce Strain. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Annie Somerville. Yes. Motion passes. Wonderful. Um, so for discussion items today, we have topic scheduling. I'd send out the survey um, and there was no responses. Turns out that it was locked. You guys, you guys actually couldn't if, if you did try. <laughs> so we'll just have um, the officers talked about some suggestions, what we would propose. And so um, I'll share that with you in a little bit. Um, before we talk about the upcoming topics for the year, um, I would like Elizabeth Thompson to share more about the Older Michiganians Day. Um, they have some advocacy points that maybe we want to jump on or learn more about um, as we go through this year. So Elizabeth, please share. Okay, as I was uh, uh, talking about before the meeting officially started, I went to Older Michigan Ganians Day, which is part of Senior Action Week, which traditionally happens uh, the first week of May. Um, and all the various advocacy groups from the AARP to the Silver Key Coalition to for uh, Michigan, 4A Michigan, which is the group of all the area action, area agencies on aging, uh, their group and other state level advocacy groups get together each year and develop a legislative agenda, which then on Older Michiganians Day, folks from all around the state show up um, learn about the um, advocacy uh, issues and then go speak individually with their uh, representatives in the Capitol. It's also, everybody's encouraged to contact their legislators <clears throat> um, by phone or email or a letter to keep advocating for the issues. Um, 
this has historically happened for years and years and years, as I was saying in the beginning. Um, my mother, who was a very active senior advocate, was involved in early days. And those of us who've worked in Lansing over the years or in aging issues over the years, I'm sure, have uh, heard about the agendas over the years. And actually, it this coordinated effort has proven to be quite successful in some years. Uh, I think uh, they had a large effect on raising the salary of direct care workers paid for by state programs uh, last year. And I'd like to briefly go over the four main advocacy points. Um, there were members from many other counties, commissions on aging there. I had the chance to talk to a few of them. And many of them are looking to look at these four advocacy issues. Thank you, Taylor, you're ahead of me. Mm -hmm. The first one is support and strengthen the long-term care ombudsman program. If you were part of the commission la last year, you remember that we had folks from our uh, long-term care ombudsman office with uh, Ageways come to speak and talk about it. Again, that this is a really personal thing to me because my mom helped found the long-term care ombudsman program in Michigan back in the early 70s. The sad thing is it has not grown significantly since then. So data shows we're 50 out of 53 pro, uh, state programs in uh, the number of staff to beds. This is a federally required program. It's un It has individuals, both professionals and volunteers participate in helping deal with issues that are raised by residents of nursing homes, homes for the aged or adult foster care homes, or their other individuals or their families. There are two unique things about the program. First of all, it um, relies heavily on volunteers to help make those visits to the licensed facilities and gather information. And yeah. two, they success, often very successfully work to negotiate with the actual facility and the individual to try to come to a resolution about that particular problem. And, but we don't have enough money in Michigan to pay for staff, enough staff to visit and to recruit and train. There's a significant training process for volunteers. Yet one of the things research has shown again and again is that um, the openness that a program like this brings to facilities is very important for resident safety. It, outsiders going in and seeing and talking to the residents is key to surface issues. So we've recommend, uh, the recommendation is to fund an additional $3 million that's in the House budget. It is not yet in the Senate budget, which is only $1.2 million. One of the things that could be done is to encourage our local uh, state uh, senators to uh, see that $3 million be put in the coming year state budget and also um, encourage the uh, state reps to continue to support that $3 million. The next, could you go down a little bit? As we know, um, informal caregivers provide most of the care to seniors who need it. Um, they're urging an appropriation to develop uh, caregiver resource centers, which will help uh, provide support uh, to family caregivers. The next slide or the next page. Yeah. Access to my choice. Most of you may be familiar with what my choice is, which is the Medicaid waiver program that allows the state to use Medicaid dollars to provide services for uh, seniors in their homes rather than having to be in a nursing facility to receive those. We have uh, an asset limit, this $2,000, which is really low 
which means that many people are not eligible to participate in the waiver program, even if the state has slots available. So they're encouraging the, the limit to be raised. And the long goal is to try to shift Medicaid funding from nursing homes to in-home care, which as we've heard, and we probably uh, support ourselves, most older adults would prefer to stay in their homes and live in their community, age in their communities. And then if you could go down a little bit, we've got wait lists for those in-home services that are uh, funded by a combination of federal and state dollars, issues like home delivered meals, personal care, homemaking, <laughs> and was really key respite care for the caregivers. Um, uh, make it, those supports are what make it possible often for people to stay in their homes and their family members to care for them. So there's also an ask for increased money in the state budget to uh, fund more of those services. So that's very quickly the um, issues that were discussed. Um, and uh, there's pretty much unified support in all those uh coalitions for these asks in the state budget. Um, I know Taylor has the uh, email copy of that. She will be able to distribute. And I believe you may have hard copies available through Ageways at some point, if possible. I don't, Stephanie said something about that. So anyway, I'm just saying what we talked about. Uh, you folks may uh, at some point decide that you want to focus on one of those issues as one of our um, uh, commission's advocacy issues. Yeah, Bruce, okay. go ahead. Um, thanks for the presentation, Liz. It's very helpful. Um, did you get any indication that the state leadership around aging, either from the agency level or elected officials are any more interested under democratic leadership in the aging questions. I know that Governor Whitmer did propose the tax credit for um, $5,000, you know, for I think family caregiving. Is there any other indication of was leadership was more interested or more involved um, or was it mostly coming from the advocacy community? Well, I, the um, Bureau, the American, the uh, ACLS Bureau, which is part of the larger Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, is <clears throat> supportive of all these asks. Um, these asks did not originate solely from the governor's office, from what I understand, but the certainly the House of Representatives, the head of the relevant committees, are very supportive of these. I would say a key thing to notice is that um, there seem to be on um, the legislators who did were able to make the time to come and speak uh, an age uh, differential. I think. As I know myself, as I've gotten older, um, these issues become more pertinent to me. I think some of the legislators who are older, this is much more pertinent. But the one clear thing of the legislators who did come and participate, it's those personal stories from members in their district that are really compelling. They There are so many competing ass in the state budget that I think what really makes legislators pay attention is being able to have people in their district who need those services or who have benefited for their services give their information. But I, I think there is both from the ACLS, the administration, uh, is doing a lot to focus on direct care workers training and enhanced pay. Um, 
So I think now is a time where we may see more movement on that. Anyone else have questions, comments? Uh, Marta. Yes, um, maybe we've already been given a copy of the handout that was being shown on the screen, but if, if we, could we get a copy of that? I'd like to send it to the people that represent me. Yeah. And that would, that's the one thing I forgot to say um, is if you are interested, you might, this, this was, the platform is designed to be shared widely. So if you have friends, neighbors, coworkers, fellow advocates, please share it and encourage them to think about uh, which portions of the platform they want to support or indeed all of it. Um, because the more voices, the more likely to get the attention, as Bruce said, of the legislature and the administration. What what form is it in? Is it a PDF or? Yes. Because it, could it be turned into a JPEG? Because I can't share it on Facebook if it's a PDF. Yeah, I know how to make it into a JPEG. I can do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Great. Um, I do want to note that our long-term care odds budsman, um, I never said that right, is triple A1B or now age ways. Mm -hmm. So if if um, things are coming up in that arena, tell people to call age ways. You can call age ways, et cetera. Get information from them, make a report. Um, and then during this presentation, Elizabeth mentioned the Silver Key Coalition. Um, and they are one of the groups that we were looking at coming to speak with us this year. The Silver Key Coalition is a group working to make Michigan a no-wait state for senior in-home services. Um, and so with that, I'm going to transition us into that topic scheduling. Um, some topics that you all wanted to, to learn more about this year or to raise up to the county were housing, transportation, um, end-of-life planning, care coordination, especially as it relates to supporting caregivers, aging in place, um, emergency response, um, how that happens within Washtenaw County, how are people, especially seniors, notified, and if they can't get to an emergency station, um, how does all how does that whole system work? Learning more about that. Um, we thank you, Taylor. Um, we wanted to hear from Chris Lemon and the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation on the aging strategy that they were working on, and then we wanted to um, hear from the ARPA awardees. Um, I would propose, uh, so um, I have something just a little bit different than this, Taylor, so if you can scoot it, scoot the Silver Key Aging in Place uh, Silver Key Coalition to that care coordination, since uh, the representative from Silver Key is gonna be coming from Ageways. It would make... Um... Oh, I thought that that's the date that we had Stephanie going to be presenting was a Silver Key and then a different for care coordination. I understand, but the topics are really similar. They, they overlap a lot. And so um, my proposal to this group today is that we would hear from them on the same. So if you could scoot it and then I wanna open it up for discussion. So if people feel differently um, than I do, that would be great. We were hoping to get Bassett Law to come to this meeting, um, but they needed a little bit more notice than what we gave them, unfortunately. Uh, we didn't give them a lot of notice. Uh, so they're they're um, looking at the, the June meeting. I need to make this not take my whole screen. Participants. All right. So this is this is what we were thinking the officers um, brainstormed for the rest of this year. Comments, questions, and I see your hand, Marta. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I know that we're going to be doing the the annual report. Um, well, we have a draft of that in November and the final version in December. Then. Yes. Yep. 
So the ARPA awardees, are they going to be just reporting on what they've accomplished then? Is that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Phyllis? Um, I was wondering if Chris Lemon has that, uh, pro that report or proposal ready before October, um, that that could be helpful if we could hear it sooner, or maybe we'll have other ways of hearing about it. But in terms of uh, helping this organization, this coalition uh, utilize that um, recommendation, maybe we can uh, have him come earlier in the year. Just a thought. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Annie. Yeah, just um, adding on to what Phyllis just asked, um, as soon as that is ready to be shared to the public, I'm planning on inviting Chris to come to working session awesome. for the commissioners. Um, and so I'll make sure I keep you all in the loop on that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I think just thinking about Chris's time and getting the best information to the board of commissioners as possible, I think prioritizing him talking directly to the board of commissioners is um, key. We, he can certainly share the document with us around the same time and we can give our support, but he can talk more to us um, as time allows. Yeah, uh, Elizabeth. Um, one thing that uh, has been discussed um, about changing some of the administrative structure in Washington County government is creating an office on aging. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if somewhere, and that wouldn't necessarily take up a whole session, but might be an add in in one of the places, some discussion about the benefits from that, and even um, maybe reaching out to some other counties who've implemented that mm -hmm. and that are in a proposal that's similar to Washington County and see if I would find that useful information to see, to hear other counties experience on that. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if that would be a good like ad hoc subcommittee mm. uh, and then they could be doing the work between meetings um, and then giving reports during subcommittee updates. Um, I'm yep. going to put a pin in that and we'll put it in new business and circle back to it at the end of the meeting. Uh, Bruce. Um, did I hear that the report's now not going to be released till October? No, um, we don't know when the report is going to be released. He had hoped it was going to be released um, November, December of this past year. Um, mm -hmm. But he and the consultants they're working with are trying to really keep the board of commissioners involved in the strategy process. So when we get to implementation, there's additional buy-in already from the county to, to make this happen. Um, and so when the report is ready, what we were saying is that we wanna prioritize his him talking directly to the board of commissioners. And then as time allows, he's able to share that report with us. Um, yeah. Well. I'm just wondering, given that part of our mission was to come up with or at least be supportive of strategies, is there any way to get some earlier look at that so we could have input along with, you know, whatever Chris is sharing with the board? I mean, it seems like the Commission on Aging could be a helpful voice. In yeah, he this. is planning on sharing it with us when it's ready to be released. I'm actually on the, the Glacier Hills Legacy Fund Committee that is sponsoring the work. We've seen an early draft, and I trust that Chris is going to release it to, to this group, Healthy Aging Collaborative, and the agencies um, when it's ready to be released. We just don't know when that is. Anyone else? I had a different question um, about the officer's slate of, of issues. Was there any talk about how these might all fit in some kind of 
conceptual framework or be connected in some ways because they're all pretty important issues. And I didn't know what the thinking was around, do you go at them one at a time? What do you do at the end of a discussion or consideration of an issue? Um, <laughs> did the group talk about, you know, how to sort of knit some of this together or look at it side by side in some way? Um, I'm not sure I entirely understand your question, but I'll I'll do my best and then you can re-ask it if I haven't answered what you're looking for. Um, so at the beginning of this year, I think it was our February meeting, we asked the the COA, what topics do you want to learn more about? Where do you want the focus to be? Um, and then I made the goal sheet based on our um, discussion. And when it came to topics, we wanted to spend time as a full group hearing more about. Those were the topics that rose to the surface. Um, and so we were trying to think strategically about um, when each of the topics we would bring to you. Um, and then as far as after we've heard from a, a particular group, um, we usually ask additional questions. We And then we want to disseminate the information to whomever that makes the most sense. Sometimes who needs the information is um, agencies, hey, know that this is, you know, especially when we hear from the the county on um, emergency response, agencies like this would be great for you to know, as well as the general public. Um, other things we might want to just release to the general public. We've done press releases and things like that in the past and communication subcommittee is really in charge of the dissemination and the next steps. Um, if something is really uh, weighing on us as a COA, we can send up a memo to the Board of Commissioners. This is a special interest topic we really want you to spend more time thinking about, or if it's something um, more specific, like the Senior Millage and the Office on Aging, we make um, a resolution and a motion, and that gets passed up in a more official manner to the Board of Commissioners. Um, did that answer your question or do you have a follow-up? Well, it partly answers it. I mean, I, um, I'm just trying to understand how we as a, as a body have a more deliberative conversation. It sounds like we listen to some presentations and then try to make some sense of it and pass it on to the commissioners. Mm -hmm. But is there any, what mechanisms, if any, are are available to for us as a body to further talk about those things, not just hear a presentation? Um, I mean, we discuss it as a full as a full group, and the subcommittees are in place to help special interest areas also continue or dive deeper. Um, as far as like mechanisms, um press releases, memos, and uh, resolutions are, are really the mechanisms formally in place for an advisory group like this. Well, let me just push this one step further. Mm -hmm. So there's some pretty big issues there. Like aging in place is a very, very large, complicated issue. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to create a subcommittee for each of these areas, it does it doesn't seem like a great way for a limited body of you know we can sort of barely handle the subcommittees we have to have a subcommittee on that and several other issues at the same time and then sort of look at them in connection to one another mm -hmm. um, because aging in place has a lot to do with caregiving has a lot to do with um, you know any number of issues economic you know security for people. Medicaid, you know, there's a lot of things that connect. So I'm just wondering at what point it might be possible to have more time outside of, you know, the kind of limited conversation time we have in our monthly meetings to look at those as a group and really think together about that. Yeah, um, it, it almost sounds like your retreat idea, um, which we potentially could do it anytime we meet with more than seven people though as this group like we it needs to be recorded it needs to be available to the public because we're a government body 
Um, and so, I mean, if you want to talk more about scheduling that additional time, uh, we can definitely talk about that. Is that something you would like in new business? Sure. I, I mean, I'm, I'm also just curious if any of the other members of our group are interested in aspects of that or not. I, I don't know if it's just coming from me or so be interested yeah. in hearing people. Marta, I see your hand. I think um, from my perspective, I think some of the things that you're thinking about are is um, has been done in committees, um, you know, the more in-depth discussions and then reported out to this group. But I also think that if we need to have a substantial discussion, we should do it in the context of one of these meetings rather than have another meeting to talk about stuff that we don't talk at the, about at the meeting we already have scheduled, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm having trouble being real clear in my mind about what it is you're trying to accomplish. So maybe you could come up with a more succinct statement about what you want to do. And you're, is that to me? Yes. I would take the question and pose it to the whole group. What do we want to do? I mean, I, I'm... So I'm just that's, curious about that, but so why? to be frank, that's a it's a little bit frustrating to hear that because that's what we discussed in February. Like we we opened it, we said this is the purpose of this body. What do we want to focus on this year? What do we want to accomplish? And so what I hear you saying now is things that you're thinking about now are not being accomplished, and so you want to start from scratch. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Can you reframe it for me? Well, what I'm trying to understand is what we as a body, how we deliberate other than the process that we currently have, because that allows for um, very limited conversation, very limited information to work with. And mm -hmm. we there's just no way to begin to have a broader agenda that we are comfortable with um, and how we represent these issues without some further collective thinking together. And maybe it could happen in the course of a monthly meeting, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of time to really, you know, at least from the meetings I've observed and going back and looking at previous years of work, it doesn't seem to ever sort of take that holistic look at aging it tends to look at things on a one by one basis. So what I hear you saying is that instead of having a presentation at one of these upcoming meetings, you are looking for a more robust conversation around strategy, aging strategy in the county? Well, I, I just think I think there's a lot of wonderful work that's been done, and I think there's a lot of good ideas that come through this body. Mm -hmm. I just think that they kind of are on such an individualized track that it's very hard at times to think about how we put that together. Um, I know that the plan that we're waiting on, the master plan, will be helpful, and I'm as excited as anybody to look at that. But I'm wondering, as a board, what we can do, regardless of what that plan says, how would we begin to think our role, we seem to have a unique role in the county, being one of the only organized voices and group of people who are focused on the broader issues of aging in Washtenaw County. And I just don't see where we have enough time as a body to really adequately think about that. And I think it's even, I'll say one last thing, I think it's even reflected in the fact that um, the state level work um, is not as, we're not as engaged with the state level as we could be. And it seems like we're missing an opportunity there. There's some really good leadership. I think there's some really good work that's been done. There was a wonderful report that was done by the state on aging in place. Um, Age, aging in place, aging in community. And it raised a lot of really good ideas 
and good issues. But, you know, even that alone would be a very robust conversation. Elizabeth? Um, as a member of the group that produced that aging in place uh, uh, report, as a matter of fact, I'm one of the co-vice chairs of the State Advisory Council on Aging. Uh, we shared that with uh, the group here and did have discussions about this issue. I personally feel comfortable with the current structure of subcommittees subcommi working outside this group and bringing recommendations to the whole group. Um, I think we, as we looked at, for example, the issue of senior millages, which we started doing uh, when this group was first formed, uh, gathered a lot of recommendation to, I think, make a pretty robust recommendation based on the information we had provided to the county commissioners to um, support a senior millage. And I really think that that has really allowed, given the information to the county commissioners, to begin to discuss that idea at a level of seriousness and intent that might not have happened in the past because they had more understanding of the issues. Um, I, But I think I see the group as a whole as making decisions based on recommendations from the subcommittees. And it seems to me the subcommittees can be very robust in having that information and, and sharing. Um, so I think that has been effective in the past. And I, I'm i looking forward to what the uh, moving forward, I'm sorry, Marie, I, I don't remember exactly the name of that subcommittee. Is moving forward is perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Um, has as their recommendation, because I think in the subcommittee situation gives you the time for that extensive discussion and um, information sharing and going out and getting information uh, to present to the home group. At least that's been my experience. Marta? Um, yeah, my question um, is directed back to um, um, Bruce. Is, are you attending the moving forward subcommittee meetings? Are they not having these substantive discussions? We are, yes, we have a, a group that's been dealing with that and we had a good discussion last week. Um, but um, I think again, what we're, able to talk about in a limited amount of time is not just doesn't seem to be the best way to go at it but so the <clears throat> the subcommittee um discussions you're saying are too short well it's not just a matter of maybe phyllis you can jump in but um you know it's not just a matter of time there's no there's almost no resources to work with what what let me let me be very clear on, on one thing I, I maybe this will help crystallize it um elizabeth you said you worked on the aging in place and and i said pre, before i even knew that that i was very impressed with the document you said it was discussed and presented where does it stand now um those reports go to our requested by the Commission on Services to the Aging, which is the uh, state body that advises the governor and the legislature on issues related to older adults. They also have a very specific statutory requirement to approve the um, plans, the annual plans for each of the 16 area agencies on aging and also 
to approve the state plan, which determines how those federal dollars through the Older Americans Act are allocated to what programs and what areas of the state. So they both have an advisory nature and an official approval of a state plan. Those reports were designed to be, in a way, informally used, um, shared with bodies like this, air agencies on aging, advocate senior centers. We spread them widely to provide some resources uh, that and spark discussion uh, in any venue that anybody wanted to use them. I also will say that we received no resources from the state to provide them. Uh, I spent many, many hours as one of the authors of those. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the state advisory committee decided to focus more on issue papers because we felt they might targeted things would be more effective. We wrote an issue paper on the needs for C for increased funding for the long-term ombudsman uh, program. That was our last one. And we hope that that helped add the discussion that led the legislature to increase funding for that. So it's interesting that um, the state advisory committee has gotten far more targeted and issue oriented. Um, and part of the reason for that, frankly, is the time investment in broad discussion of issues versus the actual impact. So the state advisory council has gone on uh, uh, a different direction kind of than it I think I'm understanding you saying, Bruce, and to rather than widespread discussion to now we're focusing on much more targeted discussions, feeling that that move things, uh, agenda items more effectively. I don't know if that's a helpful reflection or not, but that's my perspective from the SAC. Phyllis? So um, if I, so I, I, I'll just reflect my, my experience um, when, so I've been on this uh, commission for a year plus, and it seems that um, everyone, who sits on it has an interest in older adults, otherwise they wouldn't be here. Um, the uh, level of knowledge is, is not um, uh, the same across the board. And so it seemed to me, or I just assumed that the purpose of this of our meetings was to learn about what's out there, what's happening. There are ombudsmen. I happen to have known about that. Other people did not. I remember some other members saying, I didn't know anything about this, that, or the other thing that was presented. So I I think on one hand, that's really helpful in what you have, we have on that list of what's coming up in future months. It's helpful to know what's current. On the other hand, um, as, you, as you probably know, I've uh, had some frustration with what was happening with the millage that had come before this commission for a couple of years and and nothing it seemed to happen except well we need more information and so i think it, if if i'm understanding where bruce is is coming from is what is our role is our role to know the aging 
uh, climate and needs and um, suggestions of what can happen? Or is this, and do we have either the opportunity or the means to actually do something? I was so pleased, Marie, when you uh, put forth those recommendations to the Board of Commissioners for the Millage and the, the Office on Aging. Um, so that seemed like, okay, this, this commission actually spoke up and did something. But I think I don't really quite understand or know what is our role? You know, do we do or do we just learn? And in terms of advising, um, if, if that's our role, maybe we need to really just uh define what does advise mean and are they are the uh commissioners on the big board receptive to our advice um i don't know that they are they seem to keep taking another tangent based on the comments i heard at that working committee. So I I brand bull too. So okay. Yeah. I'll stop. I'm gonna make a comment and then Marta, I see your hand up. So I want to remind the group that our purpose is in our bylaws and is given to us by the Board of Commissioners. Our purpose is to define the needs of and advocate on behalf of Washtenaw County seniors 60 years of age or older to promote equitable well-being, quality of life opportunities and outcomes. This includes providing recommendations to the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners and relevant stakeholders on the prudent spending of public funds related to senior services. So we, we learn um, whether it's from agencies, um, what other counties are doing, and then we make recommendations. We listen to, we're supposed to be representing the seniors in our districts. So we need to be listening to those seniors, bringing it to this group and passing it up. We actually don't get to define what advising means. The board of commissioners gives that to us. And it seems based on our bylaws, which if there's, if there's questions around that, then we need to be having another conversation and asking for you know some sort of amendment or something to the bylaws. But as it stands right now, our job is to define the needs of and advocate on behalf of, especially when it comes to public spending. Um, and that's why the millage was a big part of our conversation for the last few years. And the board of commissioners said, if you're gonna talk to us about a millage, we need certain information in order to feel okay with moving forward on that. And so sometimes it does have to move slower. We are a volunteer advisory body. <laughs> and so we don't have oodles of time. Something I was thinking about, Bruce, reflecting on the um, challenges and like, why don't, can we think more broadly and can we do? I think a lot more of that can happen when we have an office on aging. There will be dedicated resources, dedicated person power to get more of that work done, to think more strategically and broadly on an ongoing basis. Um, and so we're just, I think, I think that's just a limitation of this group. And while, while frustrating at times, um, that is where we are. Um, I also want to say that when it comes to advising and our recommendations, it doesn't just because we pass it up to the board of commissioners doesn't mean it's going to happen or happen on our timetable. Um, that's really for them to decide as the board of the county. Um, they have a lot of other issues on their plate as well. And while this is important to a lot of our commissioners right now, um, there's there's a lot of other factors at play. Just because we advise doesn't mean that they're actually going to do it. Um, uh, Marta, your turn. Um, <clears throat> I would second everything you said much more eloquently than I could possibly have managed to say, but um, I would also say that I think 
the fact that we received this report that Elizabeth pro provided uh, gives us another opportunity to take action in addition to the other kinds of things that we've been charged to do by the county commissioners. And I think that each of us needs to take responsibility to take that report to our county commissioner personally and discuss it with them and make sure they have a copy, but also to the people that represent us at the state legislature, many of whom are probably in favor of the things that are listed on that report. But I think it doesn't hurt to make sure that they're aware that we have constituents as constituents want these things to have action put behind them. Um, I was on the uh, Commission on Aging when it was formed and the county was very clear to us, we are not giving you any more resources, mm -hmm. period. So in order for us to take action, we would need resources and they're not going to give us any resources. They want an advisory body to educate them and give them information, period. And for us to change what we're supposed to do would mm -hmm. mean we're going to have to struggle with the county commission. And I'm not sure that's the best use of our time. Elizabeth? Sorry, I was muted. Um, just because it does not look like we're moving quickly does not mean what we do is ineffective. I never underestimate the power of an informed person speaking to elected representatives, whether it's on a local level, a county level, state, or even federal level. It may seem like we're not getting anywhere for a long time, but we personally can provide our own experience. Plus we speak with a level of authority having had a county commissioner recommend our appointment to this board. So clearly seen as a trusted source of information about older adults and being able to share that information and share that perspective or build enough of a relationship with our county commissioner so they can call us and say, hey, you know, what about such and such when it's related to an old adult and be there is a very powerful role. It isn't clearly defined. Um, that doesn't mean it's not effective. And I suspect some of the these broader statewide organizations and coalitions who have come together to build certain agendas and have agendas um, are very effective in their way. But I think we have a unique role that partly we play by being out there and talking all the time about what we talk about in these meetings to everybody we meet. Bruce? A um, couple of things. One is um, I appreciate that role. I mean, I understand that role and I appreciate that role. Um, but I, I also think that if you were to take a more if we were to take a more a, a deeper dive into the bylaws that maria read there would be a way to do more than we're doing i think it's a very minimal kind of interpretation of what you read i think what you read is helpful i think it's empowering in some ways there's some clarity with it um but i think we're sort of taking the most modest interpretation of it and the most in, at a time when I think we need to be bold, I think we're taking a fairly timid approach to it. Um, and I think if we embraced it, if we were a group that said, a group of advocates that said, we really want to work more extensively on what these bylaws have given us the opportunity to do, 
um, we could do more. And I will just say one last thing about that. Um, you know, defining, for example, the very first line, defining the needs. Well, I don't think we really have a clear sense of all those needs. I mean, I think there's a lot of research out there. I think we can probably assume a lot about what people need. Um, but for example, even going just back to the question of aging in place, what does it take to age in place? There is a lot that goes into that answering that question. And I don't expect us to do it alone, but the very fact that the state is really not providing resources, as Elizabeth said, where does that leave us as a county? You know, that doesn't, if we're waiting for the resources to come, they've been slow in coming for decades for older people. And I could go back to the whole history of that, but it's been slow. And the fact that the, our county provides so little resources directly for elders now, I think that $90,000 figure was noted. Um, and even the one point, even the 3 point million, if we were to get it at the state level for the current legislative proposal, that's a pittance. And I think um, we need to think as a county how we can take on this question, raise visibility around it, get people beyond, you know, the full stakeholder group more interested in what we're doing, figure out how to get some resources, whether it's through grants or other things, in order to do more. And I think if we're waiting, even if we get the millage, this is the last thing I'll say, even if we get the millage, it could be a couple of years before we see a nickel and, and we may not get the millage. There's still no guarantee that we're gonna get the millage. There's no guarantee it's gonna come out of the Board of Commission and there's no guarantee it's gonna be passed. So if we're waiting and waiting and waiting, we've been waiting for decades. I can go back and show people if they're interested. Um, read Robert Butler's Why Survive in 1976. It's the Bible of getting people active around elder issues. If you haven't read that book, you should go back and read it. That's 50 years ago. And the, the circumstances have only gotten worse. And the challenges have only gotten worse. And if we're waiting for others to sort of give us a whole lot of money to do a whole lot of things with, I think we're fooling ourselves. I'll stop there. Yeah, thank you. I think that, um, I mean, you're you're preaching to the choir. Um, almost all of us, uh, I think all of us are either working in aging, have worked in aging, um, we all get it. You mentioned um, aging in place and that there's a lot of things going on there. There is a lot of stuff going on there. Um, how do we tell the county about it? How do we define it? What solutions are in place? One of the things that I've found really helpful, not only um, with, I mean, it's just helpful everywhere, um, is instead of focusing on the problem, which we need to know the problem, we need to define the problem, but we also need to be bringing solutions. Um, and so if we're going to be talking about how aging in place is a problem in the county, this is, you know, this is what's happening, we should also be bringing to the Board of Commissioners, this is a group who's already doing this work, um, this is a model that works, or an agency that you can get behind, and I think that is one of the ways that within the structure that we were given by the county is effective. Um, it can move things forward. Um, bringing us back to the topic scheduling, um, I heard you and Phyllis that, you know, there's um, not enough time to talk about some of the things that we want to talk about. Um, I've offered subcommittees, I've offered a one, a one of our two hour meetings, and I've offered an extra meeting. Um, and I haven't heard which of those solutions will help start to address this problem you feel like we have and not spending enough time talking about the actual issues. Is and there one of those? For the group. Um, I mean, I guess both. So um, to you directly, Bruce, um, you're saying that we need more time to talk about these issues. Um, 
and I've offered a few solutions. And so whether it's you or like the rest of the group, if you would like to chime in on how that looks for our group and the meetings that we have, the structure that we have, that'd be great. Yes, Elizabeth. I would, uh, as one of the talkers, I know I talk frequently and I want to make sure that we offer space for Jasmine, Juliet, and Annie to give their uh, perspective. Juliet, you have your hand up. Hi, um, I wanted to say that, and I, I'm, I'm sorry if I offend anyone, that I found this group very refreshing. Um, I represent Dexter and we're kind of outside of Ann Arbor and uh, the Chelsea area. And having these meetings and having these presentations is very beneficial to that community because we don't know about everything that's going on in Ann Arbor. We're not aware. We're kind of, we kind of insulate ourselves um, sometimes by choice. So I think it's very beneficial where it may not be to someone else. Um, to me and in the area that I represent, it's very beneficial. It's very educational. I found myself for the first, this is my first year being very quiet and observing because there's so much information that I need to gather so that I can adequately dispense the information. So um, I think a huge portion of that is here. Um, I do feel like we do set forth policies. However, I think as this advisory committee, we aren't making the policies, we're making recommendations. So I think there's a little reality therapy that needs to be um, thought of in that area that if we want to be in a position of actually facilitating or voting on the policies or moving things quickly or or accelerating the the uh, process that maybe we need to, the, it would be appropriate to seek a governmental position or something of that nature. But in this particular group, I feel that we need to dispense as much information as possible. The public do view this video. So it's also educational for them. So when it feels like we're not um, doing the, you know, quote unquote work, it um, depends on what type of work we're referring to. Because unless I'm completely confused, it's advocacy for the people that we serve. And advocacy can be education. It can be um, making recommendations to the commissioners, knowing that we don't have the end vote or we don't have the power to make that decision. I think in this committee, we need to be able to acknowledge and not do that. There's also a relationship here that we're all building amongst ourselves and with the commissioners in which we don't want to be a pushing um, group all the time either because that can be perceived incorrectly. So um, I, I admire um, what's being said. I think it's the ideal situation if we could vote on something and it goes through or we could have a retreat and it'll solve all the problems or a lot of the problems or move things through. But I also think there's value in a PACE discussion. There's value in making sure that everyone represented in this group has all the information of what's available to seniors. I think that when we're talking to people, we can ask specific questions. There's been many opportunities where there've been presentations in the group where I've been able to ask a specific question question about the area that I represent and they were able to answer me so then I could then advocate. So I think that that's been very helpful and that's just uh, my two cents and I'm sorry if I spoke too long, but um, I, I am happy with the way the group is moving. Of course, I have certain things that I'd like to push through um, tomorrow if I could and call the commissioner and have them fix it or um, make a recommendation. But the reality of the situation is that's not a reality. And we can spend 20 hours trying to make that a reality or we could understand that that's not the reality here with this group. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Jasmine, Annie. 
Um, I, I I agree with what Julia just said. Um, and then I think just, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Just as like a commissioner, I'll just tell you all, like we have over 30, I think we have like 30 commissions that advise the board. Some of them are statutory and so there's some legal binding, um, but it's a lot. And so um, I think, unfortunately things move slow. Um, and it's just the reality that we have to deal with because we have two meetings a month regularly. And then the summer months, we have one board meeting um, and then all of us sit on several commissions. And so in terms of capacity for commissioners, um, advisory, you advising us is the capacity that we have. Can I ask you a quick question, Annie? Yes. Given that you guys deal with 30 commissions, there's committees, there's, you know, I, I think the list of issues is probably as long as any of us can imagine. Um, and given that there are a handful of the commissioners who are particularly, I think, knowledgeable about aging and leading the, you know, the efforts to do stuff um, around the millage and, and otherwise, um, and given that you're uniquely sort of sitting in on this group as well as the, the commissioners group, what besides our relationship to the commission directly through conversations or presentations or recommendations, what do you think would be important to move the commission? I don't know how many people look at this video that we, you know, on our constituency looks at this. I don't know how many of us have active involvement and engagement on a regular basis with the six, six or 700,000 people who live in Washtenaw County. But I mean, what from the community level would be important in having the commission realize that aging is a really critical issue and you know, I know it's it's sort of been a back burner issue for a long, long time, and just getting more attention on it. What would be your thoughts on that? Um, I think you know some of what I shared at the last meeting, um, reaching out directly with the commissioner that you represent on the board, so everybody has a co coinciding district, um, and you know the town halls that have been organized are great. And then we get the yearly update from the chair of this body. And so those are all the best ways, I think, to get to them. The one-on-one -on -one conversations, um, having other constituents read out, reach out, those are the, the best ways. Do you think at the end of the day that um, even with the millage, if the millage, it gets passed, let's just be hopeful, um, that we're going to have the kind of resources and plan that we need to really take on the complexities of long-term aging facing, you know, the county? Um, I don't think the federal or state government have been planning well enough for this issue. Um, and so it's a unfortunate burden on the county and we don't have resources either because we're juggling, um, complex issues around funding for public health and mental health and housing and homelessness. And so with auto millage, I don't see our ability to navigate older adult concerns. Um, and it's uh, the lack of funding from the federal and state government, um, not just on this, but on other like human service related issues is unfortunate because we are a body of nine commissioners with less resources and we have a lot of needs in this county. No, I appreciate that. Um, it's a it's a grand frustration that we all share. Um, I guess that's what urges me to think about what we can be doing beyond talking to our individual commissioners, having the occasional town hall and having occasional conversations given that there's been a lot of really good work done over the last 20 years that has been helpful, but a lot of it sort of 
there's not the staffing, there's not the resources to sort of take it to the next level. And it, it sort of leaves us uh, a bit stuck waiting for other things to happen. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to jump in now. Um, I think, you know, that would be thinking about some solutions to that, Bruce, I think would be really helpful um, to have the, the moving forward subcommittee looking at some of those things, taking into consideration what Annie shared this time and last time um, and coming up with some solutions and we can have more robust conversations around some of those solutions. Um, I do need to move us forward. So um, I'll have Taylor share the tentative um, schedule with you all in her follow-up email that will have the, the other documents we already mentioned. Um, it is a tentative schedule. So if something else comes up or you feel like it's a really pressing thing, anybody feel free to share it with the officers and we'll see what we can do about um, making time and space for those conversations at upcoming meetings. Um, so with that said, let's move on to subcommittee updates, uh, communications. That's Marta, Jennifer, Jennifer, and Jasmine. Any updates from communications? We have not met, so no. Super, easy update. Um, moving forward, I know you guys shared a little bit of what you talked about at your last meeting already, but anything additional you wanna add right now? I would ask either Jasmine or Phyllis if they wanted to add anything, but um, I, I do think we touched on a fair amount. Okay. Phyllis, Jasmine? I'm not gonna add. Great, <laughs> great. Um, and then the last one, town hall, that's Brenda, Jennifer, Margie, and Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, you're the only one here. Do you have an update? Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, the, you have gotten flyers, I know, were distributed electronically. Um, actually, now I think about it, um, maybe if Taylor, if you or Marie could also convert that to a PNG to make it easy for uh, those of us who do Facebook a lot mm -hmm. to share that. And even Instagram, that's a dual way. Um and the flyer has all the details. Brenda has confirmed um, uh, speakers. Um, you also have room for many resource tables. Um, if there is an organization you work with that wants to have a resource table, I would suggest you get their information and share that directly with uh, Brenda and Jennifer Heckendorn who's helping coordinate that, um, especially for those folks on the uh, side near Chelsea. Uh, Julia, uh, anything you can do personally to encourage people to come out? Uh, the issue about scams and safety is a major issue. As you may know, Ypsilanti Township has done its own presentation because last year ours was so popular. They did uh, one recently. So um, that's the update on that. Thank you. Yeah, we'll include the PDF and the JPEG in the follow-up email. Taylor, you and I should stay on after this to make sure that we can do everything. <laughs> um, great, great, great. Um, <clears throat> next up is report from the Board of Commissioners. So Annie, any additional updates that you wanna share from the BOC? Sorry, um, I don't have any updates at this time. Um, I'm meeting with Commissioner Maciejewski next week to talk about next steps. Um, I'm bringing language forward to vote on for a senior millage. So um, mm -hmm. I can tell you that it's not gonna happen in May and will likely be something if if we can pull it off it'll happen in july great um if you need any support let us know we're happy to help thank um, you and if you guys didn't get a chance to listen to the april 17th meeting the working session meeting i'd encourage you to go back and listen to it they talked about the senior millage and then um commissioner Machieski proposed a 
a potential way to structure an office on aging. And there was interesting conversation around that. And so I would encourage you to go back and listen to it if you have not already. Yes, Elizabeth. Could you, in everything else you're adding to that email, uh, add the link to that? Because sometimes it's a bit hard to navigate uh, the yep. county website. Yeah, I, I just find it on YouTube. I'll get that link for you. Also, if you, the bylaws, are the, I didn't see them on the commission page um, that you quoted from, Marie, if there's a way to send those. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, the, the piece that I read, uh, the, the mission piece, is on every agenda that we put out uh, to you all and to the public. So we just always keep that top of mind. Um, but we'll send, of course, the, the full thing. Um, report from the chair. So I uh, have some updates, just things going on in the community. Um, SEMCOG, the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, has a series on aging in Southeast Michigan. They did one already on resources for communities. And that webinar is available on SEMCOG's webpage. Um, they just did one on housing a week or two ago. That was really interesting. Um, they talked about senior millages at, towards the end of that too, on how some of the other counties who do have a millage, how that supports the, the housing work that's happening. Um, and then they have one on transportation coming up on May 23. And so you can register for that webinar on the website. And then if you miss the webinar, they automatically send you the recording. So if that's a topic of interest for you, I do recommend that you sign up for it. Um, I went to a rural transportation um, conference two weeks ago now. Um, there's a potential 9% cut in the current version of various budgets for transportation services, um, which will really impact the the rural transportation happening with uh, Wave People's Express and potentially even Milan Senior Center. They get most of their funding through um, the Monroe County Millage and then City of Milan Millage and a little bit of ATA. Um, but 9% is significant. Um, so there is a transit committee. Um, I don't know for sure that that's its exact name. But Michigan hasn't had a transit committee uh, since the 90s. Um, and so they've started again. Um, most of our representatives in the area um, are part of that. So please do reach out to your representative about how transportation helps our community. And a really positive thing about this transit committee too, it's a little bit off topic, but it's bipartisan. Um, and so that's just really encouraging to see both sides of the aisle working together on something like transportation. Um, yeah, what's that? Okay, so that's all on this. That was all SEMCOG aging series. The next one I have for you is uh, pieces from uh, chart and the, um, I am blanking on our name, Dina. <laughs> Healthy Aging Collaborative. Healthy Aging Collaborative. Thank you so much. I Yeah. So um, last year, there was a focus on transportation, and they are doing a follow-up NEMIT survey, non-emergency medical transportation. Uh, would you like to share more about that? Sure. Uh, so we received funding from the um, Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation to do a um, a kind of a policy brief or report brief on non-emergency medical transportation for older adults um, in our county. And um, one of the things that we are interested in doing is getting some feedback from older adults who have um, access to transportation services in our county to go to like medical appointments. Um, and um, we have a survey that got circulated um, with the agenda materials. So if you um, yourself, you know, have used um, some of our transportation providers, so this would be anything that's like public or like WAVE, um, uh, 
you know, even a, a paid private provider, but just it would not include like if you've asked a friend or family member to take you. Um, we're just interested in getting your feedback. Um, also, uh, welcome for you to just, you know, send it around to your networks. One of the hopes that we have with the Healthy Aging Collaborative, and I'm assuming chart, is that with a policy brief like this, it will help guide how we can implement NEMIT models in Washtenaw County to help financially support transportation services. Um, the other also along the same lines, you know, you know, Phoenix Mobility Rising has gotten um, funding from ARPA um, to kind of uh, build up their transportation assistance hub model. So we think that this report will be really informative for how they um, how they move that forward. Um, maybe, you know, not just just within um, what they're going to do this year with the ARPA money, but for their sustainability planning. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing the Healthy Aging Collaborative is currently working on with the Washtenaw Housing Alliance is a possible home share program. We used to have one for older adults through Housing Bureau for Seniors, and during COVID, it was discontinued, and they're not able to do it again. Washtenaw Housing Alliance is looking at implementing or starting up this service. Um, we're going to have a survey um, coming out sometime this month. So I'll definitely have it for our next meeting. But the survey is for people who are interested in sharing their home. Um, as Washtenaw Housing Alliance is looking to get this started, we feel really confident that we're going to get people who want to use the program, but we have to see what the, the inventory is, uh, for lack of a, a better word. So that survey will be coming up soon and we'll share it with you all. Um, I'll probably ask Ashley to help with a press release um, if that's okay. Any questions on those two things from the Healthy Aging Collaborative? Great. Um, the last one that I have is uh, Elizabeth reminded us about the national poll on healthy aging. It goes through you, you the, I'm sorry, I can't even talk this morning. It goes through the University of Michigan. And so there is a, a Michigan poll on healthy aging. It has some phenomenal resources. And I want to turn it over to Elizabeth to talk more about that. Um, again, uh, we'll share the information about that. But the um, interest in the national poll on healthy aging was so great that uh, the group at based in U of M who's initials I can't remember <laughs> either, it seems to be catching, he is going to be doing on a regular basis a Michigan-specific poll. So in the information they'll share with you, there's a link where people can sign up to get on the email to get information about being polled. Um, and this really is crucial in helping people who are planning for the future uh, make decisions about what's needed, what's working, what's not working. So their hope is that anybody involved uh, in aging advocacy or services will share that link far and wide so they get as many Michigan participants as they can to make it a really robust information source. Great. Any questions on that? We'll share the link with you in the follow-up email. There's some really interesting stuff there from ageism to scams. And um, another one I was reading um, was on food insecurity. Uh, they have transportation ones. There's, there's a lot of really great information there. It's not Washtenaw County specific, um, but certainly gives us a, a good good data set to, to learn from, keep our eyes on. Will it be county? Will they be able to break it out eventually by counties? That would be a question for them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to new business. Earlier in this meeting, we talked about, um, wouldn't it be great if we could learn from other counties how they're doing at Office on Aging, what uh, structure they might have, how they're... Um, 
doing work for um, the county and how they're supporting older adults and agencies in the county. Um, I think that's really interesting. We can't just like research it during our time together. Uh, so I think a subcommittee, even if it just, you know, it's, it's only around for a couple of months, I think if there's a subcommittee of people who are interested in looking more deeply at that, um, I would be interested in learning what you all find. Would anyone else, would anyone be interested? Okay, Elizabeth? Since it was my idea, I suppose it's only fair unless someone else wants to lead the subcommittee for me to volunteer to do that. <laughs> anyone want to work with Elizabeth? Learn what's working in other counties? I've been doing some research on it on my own, so I'm happy to help in whatever I, way I can. Great. I think that subcommittee should start by looking at what was done in the previous iteration of looking at what was done in other counties and just update rather than start all over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that the previous uh, millage group found a lot of information on offices on aging and commissions on aging. And so that is a good Yeah, one. I was on that group, so I'll pull together what it is. Um, many, a couple of those counties we talked to at length were um, just starting out with new millages. So we're probably going to be at the point of having to do some phone uh, conversations with people and find out what's actually happening now versus what they thought might happen when they were getting started out. That'll be interesting. And if anybody else decides as it goes along, they want to join Bruce and me, just let us know. Yeah. And friendly reminder too, members of the public can join these subcommittees. Um, we just can not have more than six of our COA people in the subcommittee. So if you run across members of the public who are also really interested in this, they can join your subcommittee. Um, great. Any other new business? Wonderful. Um, something I thought of before we close this out is that, um, you know, especially for the moving forward subcommittee, um, if you guys are are itching to to, you know, how can we do more? How can we implement more things around those lines? Um, why don't you why don't you uh, observe some of the other commissions that we have in Washtenaw County? I would be really interested in hearing how they're. Um, moving their special interests forward, um, what they have found successful and things like that. I think that would be, I think that would be interesting. And anyone, of course, is able to observe other commissions at any time. Yeah, Juliet. Oh, you're muted, Juliet. I don't want to speak for the entire committee, but I served on uh, the Commission for Children, Youth, and Families in Los Angeles for three years, and I found that um, it's it's run exactly like this committee as a as an advisory committee, and to educate um, the the various representatives for their areas on the different things that are accessible to the people that they are representing. So. Um, I actually feel like this is a little bit more um, uh, advantageous and um, organized uh, than the prior. So um, I just wanted to offer that observation. Um, and I feel like it's, the content is really rich with this group. So I just wanted to say that and be as transparent as possible. <laughs> Thank you, Juliet. All right, um, so our next meeting is June 7th, looking just one month further in July. Uh, I wanna make sure it's on your radar that we are not meeting in July. It falls over 4th of July weekend. So our next meeting though is June 7th and we'll see you guys then. Oh, we need I'm sorry, a, a motion to a break. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what Annie? Oh, I was just saying, I'm so grateful that we have a break in July. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll move to adjourn. Great. I would support. Great. We don't have to do a roll call. So if you just want to do thumbs up. 
All eyes. Motion passes. We'll see you next month. You can stop the recording.